<laughs> oh, wait a second. I'm not going to be talking about right along. Although, I'll tell you what. Raul and Hansen, they seem so genuine. Seth and, and, and they had they had Sarah Logan in the car or Sarah whatever her last name is in the car. So we did that. Yeah. Seth and Becky. Gee, it just seems scripted though. It's like watching Monday Night Raw. Stuff. And talk about Monday Night Raw. This time let's see I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'll try not to squeak my chair as much. Hopefully you won't pick it up that much. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Um, it was a, it was one of those roller coaster raws. The good was really good and entertaining. The bad was so. Let's let's get to it, folks. It starts off with a Sasha Banks promo. And eventually, someone who had to be close to the rings screams, Becky's gonna kill you. Which is kind of typical of that. Um, and Natalia jumps her. And Natalia's wearing, like... Natalia actually looks pretty cute for a change. Her wrestling outfit doesn't do her much justice, but when she wears, like, normal human clothes, she looks good. So that's how Raw started off. That was the Street Profits did a preview of. Preview, and I like that. It gets me excited for what's happening. I can kind of plan stuff. So when they say this match, I'm like, oh, I can go take a nap. Or I can go cook dinner. Or, or, or I can do something else. But I'm like, oh, Cedric Alexander versus Cesaro? Intriguing. Yes, I did get a little haircut there. A little bit tremor. Uh, for other matches, I'm like, tag team turmoil. What? War games? What? Can't do the Adam Cole baby face as well as I thought I could. Um, so, uh, so the first match starts off um, for a King of the Ring qualifier. It was Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre has to learn there's such a thing called hubris in wrestling. And that hubris is if you touch and or around the title or because it's King of the Ring throne, that was your King of the Ring moment. So... As soon as I said that, I'm like, uh oh, I know, I know how this match is gonna end. Well, let's talk about the smash a little bit. Um, Ricochet is definitely the faster of the two. Drew's just powerful. He's 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 being built up as a powerhouse. He just tosses poor Ricochet around like a rag doll. Um, eventually he did catch Ricochet. Did an amazing backbreaker first onto the guardrail. Well, actually, he caught him. Repositioned him for a backbreaker. Did the backbreaker on the guardrail. Good. And then he held on to him. And did a backbreaker on to the second hardest part of the ring. Which is the ring apron itself. Because it's the first hardest part of the ring of the turnbuckle posts. I, I don't believe what, what they say. I, I go by this guy, Hobo Tom Knows. Uh, so with that, I mean, that was amazing. Then they went to commercial break. Uh, Ricochet did catch Drew, though. Uh, he, he hit a Northern Lights duplex, but he could not roll through. Drew's too powerful for that. He levels. Ricochet. I mean, he had that one headbutt shot. Ooh! Like Ricochet came jumping off. The ring apron and 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 Drew just went Ugh! into the Glasgow kiss. Here's a Scottish headbutt. So I mean, it's, I'm definitely thinking the Scottish headbutt is the most powerful headbutt, even more so than the Simone headbutt. 
Wow. Uh, let's see what else was this match. Again, Ricochet was more innovative with his moves. It felt fresh. I mean, he he tried to do that one thing he and um do that one flippy moon, running moonsault thing from the apron to second rope to floor, but Drew moved out of the way. Uh, he had hit the recoil, which is a second rope hood breaker, which is still pretty good. Hit the six three splash. I I thoroughly enjoyed this. Even more so, and I wonder if they're doing this intentionally. Because remember, in New Japan and WCPW, he was King Ricochet. And Lucha Underground, he was Prince Puma. King Puma? Indeed. I don't know if they could use King Ricochet, though. I wonder if that's a gimmick. That's weird. But wh whatever. That was a good quality surf and turf match. Then there was Seth and Braun Strowman. They did kind of a recap and a promo together. Braun still eyeing that Universal Championship belt. It's okay. Then the second qualifying match was The Miz versus Baron. Corbin. And this was shorter. Um, the Miz starts off strong until he goes outside the ring. Wrestling and beating people up outside the ring is not the Miz's strong point, nor is trying to do fly flippy stuff. Miz don't. Just don't. Uh, then commentary. I think the one thing that took away from this match. And it was lacking last week, but there was way too much arguing involved between Corey Graves and Renee Young when Vic Joseph was there. He seemed to do more of the color commentary, but there was less commentary. Back and forth yapping. So it seemed, or at least last week, it seemed more organic. Again, it just felt more scripted. Like like they want to do this. They, they want to show themselves off versus what's going on in the ring. Hey, that just might be me. Yeah, and you can always leave, feel free to leave a comment or even email me, me about that. And you'll see that graphic later. They didn't make a graphic a long time ago. Uh, so the then they went to commercial break. Again, you kind of lose a lot. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Corey Graves said that, that the Miz was in the Sharknado phase of his career. That made me laugh. Uh, Renee was looking forward to the Miz winning. Yeah, whatever. Miz always misses that last yes kick, though. That's becoming more and more pronounced all the time that I watch him wrestle. Baron Corbin, to his credit, kicked out of a skull-crushing finale, which we haven't seen the Miz use in a while. He's been using the figure four more and more. So it's different. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not as protective as a finisher. Um, the Miz... Eventually runs into the end of days, like a swinging Sister Abigail type thing. It was, it was an okay match. It was like a cheeseburger match. Baron Corbin won. Baron Corbin is not advancing, folks, because then there's hubris involved. Always hubris. He went up to the Top of the ring where the throne, the scepter, and the crown were. He even put the crown on himself, too. Whoa. I know who's not winning. Baron Corbin just had his King of the Ring moment. Uh, Gals and Anderson's got a quick promo in the back. Ooh, can I make a video under 20 minutes? We shall see. That's what that means I can back some more. Uh, then they did a uh, Bailey's music hit. 
And for some reason, after the commercial break, they went to a Ray Mysterio recap. Oh, that's my title. Uh, it was Bailey versus Nikki Cross. It's not bad. Nikki busted out with a couple new things, a um, couple new combinations. It was really a base match. They're changing out the Bailey to belly, which is good because I hate the Bailey to belly. It's just a belly to belly suplex, folks. There's nothing special about it. She did win with the one, the only, the macho elbow, as you can tell by my macho man. There's still only one macho elbow. It's a macho man had the best macho elbow. I want to say he used to have the. Yeah, wait, I think he did. I think it would go Brainbuster, Macho Elbow, Pile Driver, Macho Elbow. Wow. So Bailey won. Eh, it's a ham sandwich of a match. I could have a match like that. So yeah, it's just a ham. Then there was. Tag Team Turmoil! Whoa! And uh, this is like the tag team version of a gauntlet match. Starts off with the Viking Raiders versus the B Team. Gee, I wonder who's winning this. Although the B Team, I'll give them some credit though. I'll give cr I will always give credit where credit's due. The B Team at least put in more offense and gave you that slightest Hint that they could actually give the Viking Raiders a match. Again, they did all the, all the right things. They they isolated the tag team isolation. Viking Raiders are too much. They isolated um, poor Bo Dallas. Needs to be with his brother. Fiend Jr. Um, this whole thing. I'll, I'll give it a rating, but this this single match was, was a can of soup. Then the Viking Raiders struck on the club, and I'm like, ooh, exactly what could have been in New Japan. And it was okay. Again, just a lot of tag team work, a lot of double teaming by the club. Eventually, a lot of double teaming by the Viking Raiders, and then eventually, the they just got into the ring and so started to to to, to brawl. The rest like, no, 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 I, I've had enough. Ring, ring the bell. It's the it's the death that fittest, baby. And in the truest sense of the word, telling the late great American dream, death the road. This was truly a nobody win situation. So that's the finish, baby. The rest that I'm done with both of you. It's a double DQ. But all that meant is because there was a little bra, there was some fisticuffs. This is a ham sandwich of a match. And so the next two participants they had to show up because two teams had to show up. It was Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler takes on the Lucha, Lucha House Party. They didn't do the Lucha House Party any... They didn't... Any... Oh, what's that word I'm looking for now? They didn't do Lucha House Party solid. Mainly because most of the match was spent in commercial. You saw again the classic flippy stuff. <laughs> and Robert, who was it? No, I think Dolph actually picked up the win in this. No, Robert Roode hit the glorious BT on, I think Lindsay Dorado. I forget. I know I th either Lindsay Dorado got knocked out of the ring, or Grand Med Lee got knocked out of the ring. I forget who was who. I couldn't get a good look at their mask. Because I know Lindsay Dorado has like the, 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 the fake fur on his mask. And they were both wearing just tights. And they had the same colors too. Or the, or the same color scheme for the most part. 
So I, I just know I could have walked in there. Uh, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler win. Well, I did see the Lucha Destroyer, though. So that was good. Again, I think m lost most of it during the commercial. As far as I, it could have been amazing from what you saw on TV. That's a can of soup. Then it was Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus the Revival. It was, it was a bad ref spot. The ref was obviously on the other side of the ring. They went for a lot of technical wrestling, which I do thoroughly enjoy. That was a real high point of, of this entire match. Um, the ref was out, out of position. I can somewhat forgive that because even commentary called him on that. Uh, great technical wrestling, though. Again, classic tag team. I mean, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler look like they've been doing this for a while, mainly because of the way that they coordinated their tags. They did their double team moves. Again, this, you always have that dastardly distracted double distracted ref, and I'm going to punch him, give him an extra punch or an extra kick. Uh, Dolph ate a lot. He ate the slingshot from the revival. Uh, I think they were t they gave props to Randy Orton for teaching him that. But whatever, though, this was really fun again. A really fun match. A lot of tag team wrestling. The way old school tag team wrestling used to be. Robert Root and Dolph Ziggler go over in a cheeseburger match. So then it's Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler taking on Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Um, Slater for some reason. Again, it was quick. You lost a lot, I think, during the commercial, at least for the TV-wise. I don't mind that much. I think when, I think when they came to us, like, oh, I can go throw this out because I, I know who's good. That are not winning. Um, it was a quick match. Again, you tend to miss a lot. Uh, Kurt Hawkins got tossed from like the top rope. He disappeared for a while. I think this was the one. Oh yeah, Robert Roode hit another glorious DDT on poor Zack Ryder. I know. To to win the other match, he really grabbed like like fifty dollars of his seventy five dollar trunks because he just like saw straight. Butt cheeks. Safe YouTube way to see. Again, so I mean, this one, I, I don't know what I missed. It's a can of soup. And then uh, in the finals, it was now Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus Heavy Machinery. And I'm like, are they actually going to do this with Heavy Machinery? Are they going to win? Again, it suspended my disbelief in wrestling. And, oh, wow. Renee has to come up with some good lines. I'm stealing your line. But she goes, make mama's dreams come true. Whoa, Renee. You need to tranquilo a little bit. But it was fun. Um, uh, Tucker goes after both Robert Root and Dolph Ziggler. Again, the pass-off flex is amazing. A night event, Tucker Knight eventually does get low bridge when he tags back in. Again, with this match, it's really good tag team action. Really good tag team work. It's so hard when you see tag teams don't act like tag teams. And now you have a tag team that acts like a tag team. It's really good and entertaining. Uh, Otis, Otis is just fun, dude. Otis, Otis. Uh, hits the caterpillar, or I think he was teasing going for the caterpillar. He does a double splash a lot. <laughs> Otis just seems to cast in these matches. He's like the ultimate warrior in that regard. He can only go for like three minutes because his because all of his antics like takes up all his energy. But uh, eventually, heavy machine tries to go for their finisher. Dolph Ziggler gets in the zigzag. I think Tucker Knight eats ten. I can't complain. It was a good cheeseburger match.
Overall, though. Oh, what should I do? Overall, tag team turmoil. They did protect both the club and Viking Raiders by having a DQ finish. Dolph and Robert Root are probably getting... Actually, those two... I know Robert Root with his road looks kind of Ric Flair. So that does make sense for Clash of Champions. I'll say it makes sense. Should be an interesting Clash of Champions in three weeks, I think September 15th. This was a good... This whole tag team turmoil... This was an this was a good solid cheeseburger. Of an event. So again, that was kinda of, that took up really most of the nine o'clock hour. That was a good I'll say at least forty minutes or so. So the next match we have uh well actually it was a Roman Reigns recap. And that followed up by a Total Divas preview. See the excitement. See the smile. It would be... <sighs> terrible. It would be interesting from a terrible point of view just to watch Sonya Deville's segments, especially when it comes with Mandy Rose. Because you know there's going to be those R-rated situations, I think. Maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll catch it eventually when it comes to YouTube. Total Divas. Is... What else was there? I know Sonya Deville was a... Uh... Also, wait a second. Whole usual cast of characters. Naomi. I think Alicia Fox was there. Why do I think I remember seeing the Bellas, too? What are they still doing involved with? And... I don't think Will was there. I don't think Ruby Riot was there, either. Oh, maybe it was Liv. Oh, I, th I think I think maybe maybe it was Liv Morgan. That would be inter That would be interesting too. I'd watch that for the Sonya Deville moments. The 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 the, 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 uh, so the Sonya Deville moments. And Liv Morgan only because she I think I saw her once when she came to Daytona and she was really upset. <laughs> she like why do I have to be in this place? She just didn't seem happy to be there. Again, going back to that whole drive along thing, to see Sarah, her husband Eric, and I forget what his real name is, but Ivar, interact, it just seems so natural versus the interactions of Seth and Becky. And I would like to wish, of course, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins, congratulations, and I wish you every happiness. Just based on their drive along thing, I don't know how long that might be, though. Because sometimes when wrestlers marry other wrestlers, it's <laughs> it only ha it only goes two ways. It's either really good or it's really bad. So then the next match was Natalia versus Sasha Banks. Ah, I don't know. This was an okay match. I hate to say it, but. These two just don't do it for me. And I don't know what it is. But it wasn't I don't know why I should complain too much. But 
I don't know. Sasha Banks was never my favorite. She always said to me out of bubble, but which is probably terrible to say, but it's the truth. Um, Natalia in her ring gear. I don't know. That's just she seemed better. She seems more natural in natural clothes. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. The word I'm looking for. But it just was one of those things where it's like, yeah. Oh, that's what I want. And I'm trying to do like one other thing quickly. But this match was okay though. I mean, nothing spectacular. Uh, a lot of brawling. A lot, a lot of, I guess, cattiness to it. Uh, oh, Natalia did hit that one amazing German suplex, though. Like, dropped Sasha, Sasha, Sasha Bach right on her head, though. A lot of good trash talking. Um, Sasha Banks eventually does that modified bang statement where she just put, put Natty's bad arm across her neck, pulled her back like that. Sasha Banks wins. A ham sandwich? Of a match? Again, I'm just not a fan of it. I try to take myself out. I mean, Sasha Banks, ha she has to learn to adjust the top of her pantyhose. I saw a pantyhose top. But, <laughs> maybe she pulled up. <laughs> it's glorious DT on Sasha Banks and pull up 50 bucks of her $75 shorts. That would have been interesting. Um, <laughs> pantyhose. That just sounds funny to say every so often. Then there was an AJ Styles promo. Say it, AJ. You can almost. Almost tell AJ was going to curse and go, all oh, new Japan on us. That would have been glorious. In his case, it would have been phenomenal. But he caught himself before he could say, I think, just bullshit, too. Wasn't that bad of a word. And um, then the next match, oh, this was amazing. Cedric Alexander versus Cesaro. Cesaro has the, the best-looking European uppercut of anyone. It's so smooth. It looks so vicious. Best European uppercut ever. Uh, so strong, Cesaro. He can just catch Cedric Alexander. Cedric can fly, though. Fly, Cedric, fly. Uh, the fun splash to the outside. Uh, Cesaro was against the ropes. Cedric had the fun splash. Sent them both careening through the ropes. That was amazing. Cesaro begins to work over Cedric's legs. He's like, you know what? Only way to ground this high flyer is to go after his legs. Cesaro's so good. That's suplex. That super plexi hit. That was awesome. And he does a half crab. I like old school moves like that. Oh, that's just the way I am. Cesaro's. He busts out so many submissions. He had the, the half crab, the ankle lock. He uses the sharpshooter or the figure nine or, or reverse figure four, whatever they call it nowadays. Uh, Cesaro did... Oh, Cesaro got caught into that lumbar check. And he sold like a pro. Cesaro, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Cesaro should be king. King Cesaro sounds okay. Again, having Cesaro versus Samoa Joe, that was tough to watch. You're like, I don't want either to win. I don't want either to lose. They should have had a death, death, finish. That's the way I would have done it. From up high. Yeah. 
Um, so again, that was an amazing match. This is uh, Cedric Alexander wins again a surf and turf match. Again, it's one of those shows. The good is really good. The not so good is not good. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Uh, then we go to a video package showing that they were at the Fox Studios. Elias was there. Elias gets rolled up by our truth because Drake Maverick's expecting him. Our truth rolls him up. Our truth becomes. 24-7 champion. And then Rob Stone, who I guess is one of the NFL or Fox studio people, rolls up our truth. Props to a non-wrestler for getting the title. But then Elias rolls him up. So at least it's not it's not like he's holding the belt. <laughs> Captive, it makes it feel like anyone can be a 24 champion. Bring that belt to NXT and Fox in October. So it makes it feel organic. <sighs> the thing is, I'm getting a little worn out by the roll up victory. This is a can of soup. Then there's a Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode promo. And the Street Profits are also in the back. Dawkins looks like he's enjoying himself way too much on Bourbon Street. Mon chéri. Do I still have that queen here somewhere? I, I, I used to have a Mardi Gras. Did I give it away? Wait a second. Did I give it away? Uh-oh. I think I gave it to gave my Mardi Gras coin away to a woman. She was married, so I didn't get to see anything either. Darn it! Then this, and then this leads off for our main event of the evening. Oh, then there was a fiend recap. That was, that was pretty good. Oh yeah, Dawkins was gonna make a voodoo doll out of like Baron Corbin's shirt. Um, there was a Fiend recap, all about the Fiend. It's good that they're keeping the Fiend off TV until it makes sense. And it's one of those things. It's good for him to be off TV. It gives him this aura, I guess, of, ooh, he only comes out. Something special is happening. So they're not overusing that, which is pretty good. Then it was time for the main event of the evening. The phenomenal one, AJ Styles versus the monster among men, Braun Strowman. And this was a fun match for the U.S. title. And I'll tell you what, Braun <laughs> tosses AJ around. AJ seems to be enjoying being tossed. Eventually, he, does, he did reverse one toss, puts the sleeper, then he starts to go after the knees of the bigger Braun Strowman. And I'll tell you what, AJ Styles is so good, though. Um, he knows that whenever Braun was he had, he had to get him. And she said, which is a powerful. That was, that was a vicious kick to the head, too. That looked like it had some, some stank on it. Um, AJ Styles tells the one Braun shoulder tackle like it was a rainmaker. It was perfect. Um, this is some New Japan AJ Styles. Braun Strowman inadvertently runs into the referee, causing the, the refs to go through the ropes, and he's out. AJ Styles smart. So Braun... No, wait. Uh, so the, the, the ref's out. Braun grabs AJ Styles, and AJ just goes right for the eye. 
breaks the ice, and then kicks Braun right. Where it really hurts the man. Yes, that's a good way. And eventually Braun does recover, because remember, he is the monster among men. He is down there for a while. He power slams AJ. Ref's still out, though. AJ's smart. AJ knows. Ref is out. I'm getting a chair. He just starts wailing Braun Strowman with the chair. Uh, eventually, the, the, Braun Strowman gets the chair away from AJ. Pummels AJ a little bit. The club come running down because Ref's not there to see him. Again, smart New Japan move. They, they try to beat up Braun a little bit. All you know is that... <laughs> They, they try. The ref was really good in selling this because he just knew he was out. He heard a chair shot. AJ Styles was flat down. Braun had the chair in his hand. The ref's like, You have chair. I heard chair. You hit AJ with the chair. I see it. I heard it. Ring the bell. And we got ourselves the BQ and AJ Styles had the biggest smile. Uh, like Eddie Guerrero type fake ring chair shot sell. Braun Strowman was beside himself. He's like, I lost. I didn't even hit him. And then he says, like, well, I might as well hit him. Whap to AJ. Whap to Luke Gallows. Whap to Carl Anderson. Oh, Luke Gallows, you want some more? Power slam, Luke Gallows. Carl, oh, no, Carl. Carl Anderson dies. AJ Styles gets, gets a running power slam. He still remains the US champion. Braun at the end just kind of picked up the belt, looked at it, threw it at AJ, and threw it at that. Mainly because of the storytelling in the ring. Because the wrestling match itself is only eight minutes. This was another surf and turf match. And it has to be one of those reasons. AJ Styles is just so good at storytelling. Especially in the ring. Especially when he's allowed to go back to New Japan AJ Styles. Oh, I should put that in there too. The hobo can come true in New Japan. And I have to write that down or I'll forget about it. In New Japan pro wrestling style. And that was raw. Entertaining as usual. And let's see here. Um, let's see here. There was one important text message. Let's see here. Uh oh. So hopefully I will be able to do my reactions this Saturday. Because here we go. I love you, mom. Uh, let's see here. Please check your inventory. Wait. For hurricane supplies. Yes, because I guess here in Florida we get hurricanes. And you know what that means, folks. Multiple three liters of cola. Bubba Cola. I'll give you your shout-out from, from Big Lots. Big Jug Rum and Cheesecake Mix. Oh, and I have to get cheese put bags, too. Is that a belt? I didn't even know I had a belt. It's pretty cool. Well, and that was raw. So, um, barring any storms or really bad stuff happening, that's well, not supposed to happen this weekend. So, Tuesday is going to be SmackDown. A SmackDown recap. Probably Friday. I'll do my of uh, Doctor Tom. Doctor Tom over, and he can give you his predictions for NXT and All Elite Wrestling. Because then Saturday's going to be a busy wrestling day. I just realized that. It's going to start off for me at 2 o'clock. So you can see this guy, a hobo Tom, here at 2 o'clock to talk about Cardiff. 
Uh, NXT TakeOver Cardiff. It should be fairly interesting. That's uh, two to six. That's only four hours. And then I get an hour and a half break. And then 7.30, it's going to be all elite wrestling for All Out. I'll try to make something for that. If not, we'll just see the visage of Dr. Tom. And that's the show for today. Wow. I don't longer than I would. Again, if you do, if you can, you can go to YouTube or be a network, network subscriber. Don't pay for it. Oh, oh, text message. Which one? No, which one? Not, not which one. I hate, I do that all the time. Uh, the one this Saturday. The one coming up Saturday. Need to get my important supplies of three. L cola no not that cola I can't even text on this thing rum rum is important and cheesecake mix oh And cheese for bags. Shoot, that's right. I have to be, be very judicious. I don't do that because I heard a nasty rumor where I work. We don't get paid till the end of the semester. That's, that's no bueno. Means you'll see Hobo Tom at your lo lo local neighborhood in Walmart. And I'll wrap that up with that. Everyone have a good night. Bye.